Guys, this is Mubeen. We are talking about the pulmonology. The lecture today is short and sweet and good one and that is a bore effect. So let's look at the bore effect. What is bore effect? The definition of the bore effect, it was actually a phenomena that was observed and documented by Bohr. The Bohr effect is this, that he observed that whenever there is an acidic environment or wherever there is high carbon dioxide pressure, that causes hemoglobin to release oxygen. So there is a right shift of the oxygen dissociation curve when carbon dioxide pressure is higher. So let's look at that. Let's say we have a tissue here and the tissue is producing, of course, it is working, functioning and it is producing carbon dioxide. Over here we have lungs. And of course, the pressure of carbon dioxide at the lungs is low. We know that P alveolar carbon dioxide is 40. And we know that the pressure of carbon dioxide over here, P carbon dioxide over here is about 40, 45 to 47 millimeter of mercury. Now this increased pressure helps unload oxygen. Guys, remember this, there is a Bohr effect and a Haldane effect. What happens is, Bohr effect is an observation that carbon dioxide increased concentration helps unload oxygen. And you would see Haldane effect is the opposite and that is in the lung side and that is increased pressure of oxygen helps unload carbon dioxide. So they both, one helps the other one to be unloaded. So let's look at it. When there is more carbon dioxide, then what happens is, let's say if we make a hemoglobin molecule here. So imagine this is inside the RBC. So carbon dioxide goes and attaches with the hemoglobin. When carbon dioxide attaches with the hemoglobin, what happens is the formula is RNH2 plus CO2 and it gives RNH2. COO and plus H. So one proton is removed when carbon dioxide associates with the hemoglobin. So keep this proton in mind. Now when the carbon dioxide connects with the hemoglobin, hemoglobin goes in a tense form from a relaxed form. So what does the tense form mean? Tense form means the hemoglobin if it could carry four oxygens or eight oxygen molecules, four oxygen molecules, eight oxygens. In the tense form, it does not want to keep them with it. It squeezes them and takes them out. In the relaxed form, it allows them to be connected to it. So in the tissue, when hemoglobin goes in the tense form, because carbon dioxide attached and there is a conformational change in the protein, that would help unload the oxygen. This oxygen, of course, will go to the tissue. So attachment of carbon dioxide with the hemoglobin creates a conformational change, a physical change in the hemoglobin and it becomes tense and releases oxygen. So that is one. Second, hydrogen ions. So let's look at another hemoglobin here. One more molecule. We are still in the RBC. We are still in the RBC here. This also has some oxygen attached to it. Now when the hydrogen comes in, this hydrogen can attach to N-terminal of alpha, N-terminal of alpha unit or subchain or C-terminal of beta subchain. Essentially this hydrogen attaches with the hemoglobin. When the hydrogen attaches with the hemoglobin, it also creates a conformational change. This is the redu reduction in pH. We know that pH reduction causes the oxygen dissociation curve to move to the right. So that is what's happening. The pH got shifted because hydrogen is present. This hydrogen connects with the hemoglobin. When it connects with these hemoglobins, once again there is a conformational change, another physical change and oxygen unloading hemoglobin becomes tense and it unloads the oxygen. This oxygen would also dissociate to the tissue and go there. There is more 
hydrogen that will come in. What is that? Remember when the carbon dioxide comes from the tissue, we did that in the carbon dioxide transport, and it comes inside the RBC. So now I have to make an RBC which is big enough. When it comes in the RBC, in the presence of carbonic and hydrase, it combines with the bicarb, which gives H2CO3, which gives proton plus HCO3, and we know that HCO3 gets out and chloride comes in, right? That is a chloride shift. This hydrogen also attaches with the hemoglobin. So the pH changes for two factors. One is carbon dioxide connecting. About 30% of the carbon dioxide that comes out of the tissue connects with the hemoglobin. So that means about 1.5 milliliter of carbon dioxide per 100 milliliter is in this form and it produces hydrogen ions. Another 60 to 70 percent is in this form, carbonic and hydrase form, and that also produces hydrogen ions. Where do they go? They reduce the pH. They attach to the hemoglobin. They create hemoglobin, acidic hemoglobin. That also, that also favors the release of oxygen. So this effect is called Bohr effect. There are three factors to it. Carbon dioxide assessment, attachment, then the proton release by carbon dioxide's attachment causing the hemoglobin to release oxygen. For each proton attachment, two oxygen atoms are removed. And for each loading of oxygen, two loading of oxygen, one hydrogen would be removed. So if you go and take this over here, then what would happen? Over here is the other way around. So if I make a hemoglobin here, when the oxygen comes and two molecules load O2 and other O2, for each two molecule loaded on the hemoglobin, hemoglobin will release one proton. This one proton will then combine with this whole process will be reversed. So this is the Bohr effect and one correction, I said one, two atoms, what I meant was two molecule. For each proton associating with hemoglobin, two molecules of oxygen are dissociated. So summary, Bohr effect is an observation that when there is increased carbon dioxide concentration and pressure, that causes hemoglobin to offload the oxygen and the oxygen dissociation curve, which is something like this, it shifts to the right. How does that shift happen? For two ways, ultimately there is a pH reduction but how does that pH reduce? One is this mechanism and the other one is this mechanism. Cool, so that is Bohr effect, thank you.